In this video, I'll show how Frame Restorer can be used to fix various footage issues like dropped, damaged, or missing frames. There are separate videos showing how it can be used for visual effects cleanup type work and removing flicker. So uh, I'm going to launch Frame Restorer from the window menu. It comes with a built in help. So as you go through the various options, the help is contextual. Um, or you can select from the topics down here. It's also got uh, language translation courtesy of Google Translate. Um, as in, you have to click on it and it'll take you to the web page. So let's start with um, I've got a corrupt frame in this footage. Okay, so here we're going to use the restore option and all I need to do is add a layer marker which I did by pressing the asterisk key on the numeric pad but you can also select from layer marker, add markers and I'm going to choose uh, restore marked frames and hit apply and then if we watch that back you can see that it's restored that frame. Basically it's uh, Frame Restore is all about using motion interpolation to do all kinds of neat tricks. And so what it does is it's recreating that frame from the two either side. OK, so that's a nice, simple thing that if you if you have damaged frames, you can just mark them and it will replace them. So. Let's move on to missing frames, so. Here's a image sequence. I bring it in and After Effects says there are a bunch of missing frames. And if we look at this, you can see all those color bars, which is what After Effects puts in when there are missing frames. So uh, in the past, there was a big problem with this where um, people were capturing onto digital cinema cameras, um, typically in the DNG file format and capturing onto storage that wasn't fast enough and would have a bunch of missing frames. So what we can do here is we use this find missing frames function and hit apply. And um, if I press the U key to reveal the keyframes, you'll see that Frame Restore has marked all the frames that are missing. And then we can just go to restore mark frames, apply, and there you can see it's fixed them all. So alternatively, you can just, uh, if we bring in the original footage again, you can just use find and restore missing frames and it will do it all in one step. But so nowadays, uh, it's mostly rather than capturing onto cinema DNG, it tends to be into a um, video format, QuickTime format. So now what you're more likely to see is duplicate frames. So if you have dropped frames when you're capturing to video, then they will show up as duplicate frames. So if we watch this back, you can see this kind of stuttering. And again, it's because it's been cap captured onto um, storage that's not quick enough to uh, record all the frames. So. Let's go and have a look. Here we go. So if we just step through, you can see duplicate, duplicate, and then it kind of jumps on. So the time is correct, but there are just frames that are missing. So again, uh, Frame Store is smart enough to know um, whether to check for duplicates or for missing frames, depending on if it's um, video or an image sequence. So we can again just go find missing frames and uh, there you go, it's found. So we go through and you can see duplicate, duplicate, duplicate and duplicate, etc. So again, we can go restore mark frames and that's fixed. Um, and also, so let's bring in the missing frames again. So kind of to speed things up, you could um, 
you can also like batch select multiple bits of footage uh, in your project and select find and restore, hit apply and kind of leave it running for a few hours or however long it takes. And uh, Frame Restore will go through and uh, do all of them, put them into new comps and um, fix them all. Or you can have like um, multiple bits of footage in a single comp and again, do the same thing. And again, it will go through and fix all that stuff. Okay, so what's next? Okay, so here's a sequence that has a big um, chunk of frames missing. So let's do a fine missing. And you can see there's a chunk here where uh, where there's like six frames in a row that are missing. Is it, this is not that extreme. I've seen some pretty awful footage while I've been um, researching and developing this, and it, this does happen. Now, um, let's do a restore on this. Now, what can happen here, uh, this uh, actually isn't a very good example, but what can happen is um, over these long periods that are being filled in, you can end up getting more motion artifacts. You can kind of see over here, there's kind of, there's stuff happening. Uh, where, you know, the, the bigger the gap that's being restored, the uh, more trouble uh, the software is having at um, filling it in correctly. So uh, there's an alternative here, which is you can select this alternate blend um, over six frames, or you can specify how many frames, and you can choose for those bits to either use a frame mix, which is like a basic blend, or whole frames, which would be the same as duplicated frames. So let's set frame mix and apply that again. And you can see it's created this extra layer. And uh, now this is not a good example because we this is not what we want here, but it just does a basic blend over those frames, which in some cases will be less distracting than the motion artifacts that you might get. Um, and you can always turn this off because it still does the regular restore underneath. Um, but it's just on these big gaps, it ha you have the option of treating them differently. And if we look at the effects on this layer, you can see it's got this gap threshold. So even after it's been created, you can play around with this. So you might be like, oh, well, I only want it on gaps that are 10 frames long. So if I put that in, then it wouldn't be doing it on those frames because uh, it's higher than the threshold. Um, so uh, you can kind of play around with it later. And also um, when these um, frames are restored, this um, FR markers, which is what Frame Restorer kind of uses to um, mark frames and then give you feedback. These will be filled in with the values of how many frames were restored on each gap. So you can actually view that in the graph editor and you can kind of, so you can spot the areas in your footage that is that has the most trouble um, and kind of go and review that and see if you need to use this alt blend. Okay, so that's, uh, that's that. What's next? Okay, so so sometimes footage isn't um, missing. Like the examples we've seen up till now are is footage where the frames exist in time, but they are just not the right frames. There, uh, there's like a placeholder. It's either a missing color bars or it's a duplicated frame. But um, if we have a look at this example. You can see it's quite stuttery. Now, what's happening here is presumably because of some bad frame rate conversion issue, um, regular frames are actually being skipped completely. So let's um, if we go in here and have a look. And uh, if I put my cursor here and just step through the frames, um, actually, that was, that was one of the big gaps. But, okay, let's move forward. So you can see that's small gap, small jump, small jump, 
big jump. Okay, let's add a layer marker there. So we want to find a pattern. So typically with these kind of frame rate conversions, it will happen in a pattern. So let's do it again. So small jump, small jump, small jump, big jump. Okay, so uh, we've got two markers here. And so we're going to switch to the insert section here. So because we're not restoring frames that are missing or duplicated, we're actually trying to insert new frames um, because the time has skipped forward. So um, we've got this repeat markers function. And so what you can do is just after marking a couple of frames, you can do that and then uh, it will push those um, markers in a repeating loop out across the footage. Um, let's move a little bit further and just verify. So small jump, small jump, big jump. Okay, so you can see that this repeating pattern is correct. So what we now want to do here is uh, insert frames. And we just want to insert one frame on each marker. So we've got this insert amount, constant number of frames. Let's hit apply. And let's watch that back. So that's new frames being inserted. The footage will be running 16 frames longer now um, because it's got 16 new frames in it. Um, so here is one I made earlier, which um, just to show a comparison. So this is the inserted on the right and the original on the left. So just give you an idea of how much smoother it is. But again, it's obviously 16 frames longer, but yeah, much smoother. Now, also, I have seen footage where not only is there duplicate duplicate frames, but also skip frames as well. So here's a mock-up I've done to kind of show that. So this example, as you can see, is a bit quite juddery. It has duplicate frames in there. Let's see if we can find them. Yeah, so there's some duplicates. But it, it does have some skip frames as well. So oh, I think this has one skip frame. And so in that case, what you would do is, so you would do the restore duplicates first. So let's do a find and restore. I should talk about the duplicate frames here a bit because there's this duplicate frame match tolerance. So when it's trying to find a match between duplicate frames, there are various things like compression or whatever that can kind of mean that it's not a 100% perfect match, but it is a, is a duplicate frame. So you might need to play around with this value I've suggested between 0 and 20, which seems to cover the typical range. So if you're doing long footage with duplicate frames, you might want to do just a shorter section first and play around with this frame match tolerance until you find the one that picks up kind of the right number of uh, frames. But so let's um, do that first. OK, so they, these are the duplicate frames it's found. So we'll restore those. Have a look at that. Okay, so generally smoother, but there is that there is that skip that's happening. So let's see if we can find it. There it is. So that's not a skip because the frames before in the other case you get duplicate frames and then you get the, the kind of the big jump in motion as we then get to the other side of the frames that were duplicated. But in this case, there's no duplicate frames. There's just this skip in time. So now I've restored the duplicates. We now need to insert this uh, skipped frame. So let's go back to the insert section. Now let's um, get rid of those markers and we're just going to add another one on this frame, which is the frame we want to insert. So essentially we're inserting from between this frame and this frame. So the new frame will be on this frame. And um, some, you'll have to kind of play around with, sometimes you might need to insert two frames, sometimes one frame. Um, I happen to know on this one, because I did it 
really it's three frames so it's uh, skipped three frames and what you can either do here is you can put three in there uh, or you can put three in down here so you can on each of these frames you're going to insert you can choose how many frames are inserted at that time uh, and you could or you could um, you could link this um, to another control, another slider control with an expression. So you would just use this for the to mark the the keyframes, and then you'd use the other one to uh, control the number of frames. So you could do things like that. Um, but so in this case, we do use marker values. So it would insert the number of frames you've specified here. So let's do that, and you can see it says three frames inserted. And so let's watch that back. And you can see all nice and smooth now. So um, one final thing is, let's go back to the uh, missing frame. So just talking about insert and the kind of flexibility you have. So this is the missing frame. So let's go back and do a find missing frames. Here are missing frames. Now, just so to give you an idea of the flexibility you have with insert and the kind of why I've put all these options in here um, is um, so let's I'll just show this as an example hopefully you'll understand where I'm getting to so if I insert a constant number of frames but set it to minus one what you're essentially actually doing is removing those missing color bars completely shortening the footage by uh, inserting minus one frames at those um, keyframes so let's do that and you can see you end up with footage that's seven frames shorter and it now just jumps forwards at those times but if then I and you can see it's now added these um, keyframes that say minus one so that tells you how many frames would were removed on each of these frames and if I now select this uh, inverted marker values so negative minus one is plus one right so if I do an another insert on top of that I've essentially now restored those seven frames but by interpolating between the frames either side so what you end up with is exactly the same as when you did the restore because rather than just doing a restore in one go you've now deleted seven frames and then you've inserted seven frames I hope that makes sense but just just to give you an idea of the flexibility that you have here this kind of stuff it does require you to kind of get in there and analyze the footage understand is this a duplicate frame is this a skipped frame uh, in order to kind of get the most out of these tools so I realize this was a lot to get through and um, hopefully I've not gone too fast but uh, I recommend checking out some of the other tutorials the we, we've not even covered um, like what you can do with the reduce function which can do some really awesome stuff but uh, that's it for this tutorial so thanks for watching